I am Deepak Fatak, the principal investigator of MOOCs related projects in IIT Bombay. Uh, I have my colleague here, Professor Uday Gaitonde, who will actually be the coordinator <coughs> for this short workshop. So let me request Uday to come here and join us. Uh, professor Uday Gaitonde is a professor of mechanical engineering. He was earlier head and dean and other things. Both of us are uh, PIC sign, whatever, whatever you call it, the same position. More importantly, uh, he has been associated with offering MOOCs courses globally. Uh, so two of us and our colleagues have actually offered courses on the EDX platform to global learners. And uh, both of us will be offering courses on the Swayam platform as it will be launched. So in India, we can definitely claim to have some real life experience in this. Uh, before reaching out to all of you, let me first uh, welcome uh, two special guests. One is Professor Pradeep Verma. Pradeep, if you can, uh, some of you may have known him. Uh, till recently, he was a senior advisor, senior consultant to MHRD in NMEICT. He left that position to pursue his academic uh, inclinations. He is now a, an adjunct professor at IIT Kanpur and started teaching a course. But noticing that he is free part-time, IIT Bombay has engaged him as our advisor on all national mission projects. So he has been kind enough to come here. The second important person, I mean all of you are important, but from my perspective of initiating all these activities is uh, Dr. Rajaram Sharma, many of whom you would know. Uh, he has been the initiator of uh, many important uh, activities incorporating technology in school education. Uh, he is part of NCR. You are, you are what? Joint director or something. I am sorry, as a teacher, for me there are only two categories of people, teachers and students. So, <laughs> I can't remember the exact title sometimes. So, welcome Dr. Ajahn Sharma. He has agreed to be with us, although there is an important SARC conference that is going on in uh, Delhi tomorrow and day after. I have been asked to participate there, but on my behalf, uh, Professor Uday Gaitonde, who is the course coordinator, will conduct this workshop. I am with you throughout the day today. And uh, Professor uh, uh, Pradeep and uh, Dr. Rajaram have agreed to be with us throughout the day. Let me also introduce briefly uh, my team here. Uh, we begin with the audio video team. You see these people here. They are the front end. Uh, the team is led by Dr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Sajjan Dixit. He is not here. Ah, Sajjan is here. He is the head of our video team. Uh, sometime during this workshop, you will visit this small studio that we have established in order to capture the video recording lectures and editing and so on. And uh, um, uh, his second in command, Sushant. So we have a small team. This team was actually created and nurtured for our large-scale teachers training program. We train 10,000 teachers at a time uh, who are spread across 300 remote centers. So live lectures are run uh, every day during that workshop from here. All 10,000 participants can interact, ask questions. And in the afternoon, those 30 or 40 teachers who are assembled at each remote center do their laboratories, discussion sessions, tutorials, etc. in the local remote center under supervision of a local expert. I expect the massive open online courses to actually uh, move ahead in two different ways in India. One is of course the direct learners who will learn online. The second would be a large number of students who are actually enrolled in some regular educational programs, but would benefit from these courses and they would benefit more if the local teachers take cognizance of the fact that there is a MOOC course running on a particular subject and therefore their teaching could actually be used uh, with the MOOCs uh, offering to complement each other and make the learning experience better. And that is the reason why we have proposed in the large scale uh, uh, adoption of MOOCs that we will also, uh, not only will train teachers like you who will actually design MOOCs courses and will operate MOOCs courses, but we will also try and uh, run at least awareness programs and some hands-on programs for all the teachers who are likely to use these MOOCs 
for benefiting their students to a larger extent. That is the long term perspective. I would like to begin with a brief introduction. Oh, I forgot, uh, I just introduced the video team. I have a <coughs> workshop team which handles logistics of all such workshops, including teachers' training workshops. This team is led by Dr. Mukta Atre. Uh, Mukta is here. Uh, and uh, your team, are there any people from your team? If you can just raise your hands, yeah. Mahendra and Kanan are two people with whom many of you would have been corresponding. So they are the uh, handlers of all, all kinds of logistics and registration and all those issues. And they are of course led by other people. Dr. Jaya Gaitonde is our finance minister. So she handles all finances. If uh, uh, she would be responsible to ensure that before you leave this place, your uh, traveling allowance checks, etc., are handed over to you. Please remember that she is very strict on paperwork as per GFR, whatever, whatever. So uh, please cooperate and she would handle that. I suppose you are. I have signed some blank checks yesterday. I believe they are for them. So she does work in advance because I'm, she knows I am going to disappear suddenly. We have a content team primarily. Uh, concentrating on MOOCs content, but earlier they were generally in charge of contents. This is led by Kalpana. Kalpana is here. She is assisted by various people. Uh, we had a special cell in, in our projects uh, because we were doing an Akash pilot for school children. Uh, the reason we picked up nine standard science and maths is that we tried to do our pilot in some select schools in villages using Akash tablets, but using nine standard science and math courses. So this activity for the content creation, etc., was earlier spearheaded by Dr. Madhuri Savan. It is now led by Dr. Kiran Khosla and her team. Kiran is here and uh, uh, she is in fact contributing to translation and dubbing of some of our engineering courses, which can be g taken by students at all levels. For example, a programming course. Unlike his course, which is thermodynamics, which, which requires some engineering background or some engineering initiation, a computer programming course is, as you know, even 8th standard, 9th standard students study programming, and so do uh, MTech and PhD students. So this is a, a, a course encompassing a large population, and its translation in Hindi is being spearheaded by Dr. Kiran Khosla's team, and another person, uh, Gautam Day, he is not here. Uh, anyway, so these are uh, for all technology related activities of our MOOCs projects, uh, we have a project management office which is headed by Parag Tiwari. Parag uh, and his team, he also led the entire Akash software development along with Dr. Uh, Mr. Rajesh Kushalkar, who is the other guy. Uh, when you are here, you may interact with them and find out more about what they do. I will mention some of the relevant things here. Ordinarily, such workshop is planned six months in advance. And Dr. Mukta Atre and her team was chagrined when I saw, suddenly announced after uh, discussing this with Dr. Rajaram Sharma that we are holding this workshop. A three-day workshop is neither here nor there. Okay. Because if you want to be properly trained, you should spend at least 15 days followed by a lot of activities. But events are overtaking us, the nation wants to move very fast and therefore we are requested to kickstart the activity. And that is why when both of us met in Delhi, we said let us conduct a three day initiation workshop on the lines of similar workshop that we create, conducted for our uh, university teachers sometime. So thanks to Mukta and her team that we are here. Uh, let us begin with a quick introduction because uh, I do not know most of you. Although like all of us, I have been a beneficiary of uh, teachers like you in my school days. Uh, I have a special privilege. I studied in 14 different schools of Madhya Pradesh. And as you know, each school always will have one or two teachers who make a difference to you individual. So normally there will be one or two or three teachers in everybody's life. I have 28. So that's an extraordinary privilege. All of them have made a great difference to me in my life. And I hope that you and your colleagues will continue to do so. So could we begin with uh, some introductions, please? Yeah. Akhle Srivastava. Yeah. Rajasthan, Dholpur se. 
विच प्लेस राजस्थान में धौलपुर धौलपुर आगरा के पास में है धौलपुर इज वेरी नियर ग्वालियर आगरा हाँ बीच में दोनों आगरा ग्वालियर आई स्टडी इन ग्वालियर फॉर टू ईयर और मेरा लो कॉस्ट नो कॉस्ट टीचिंग मेटेरियल में थोड़ा सा अच्छा वो so है कौन सा सब्जेक्ट पढ़ाते हैं फिजिक्स पढ़ाता हूँ धन्यवाद माई सेल्फ देवकरण सिंह फिजिक्स लेक्चरर गवर्नमेंट सीनियर सेकेंडरी स्कूल झुंझुनू राजस्थान झुंझुनू माई सेल्फ एच एन झा फ्रॉम केंद्रीय विद्यालय जे एन यू कैंपस न्यू दिल्ली आई एम पी जी टी मैथमेटिक्स दे ए वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू वन एंड ऑल प्रेजेंट हियर आई एम एम गोपाल रेड्डी आई एम वर्किंग एज ए फैकल्टी इन फिजिक्स इन जड आई टी जनरल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ एजुकेशन एंड ट्रेनिंग मुंबई आई जॉइन इन केंद्र विद्यालय संगठन नाइनटीन Oh I see. So you are very near IIT campus. I see. Uh, good morning everybody. I am M Srinivasan, PGT Mathematics, faculty at Zonal Institute of Educational Training, Mumbai. Oh same thing. Same. So you are commuting every day rather than staying in that. Uh, yes, we are commuting every day, sir. Yes. From our office, I, we are. I do not know. You are all staying in the MTNL guest house. The accommodation is okay, but the food is terrible. Yes, yes. And uh, we unfortunately have no accommodation on the campus. Otherwise, would have loved to accommodate you in the guest house. Uh, Raja, I mean, Dr. Rajaram Sharma has offered that subsequent workshops like this could be conducted in Delhi because NCERT has much better facilities apparently <laughs> to support these things. I have very good food. Also, yeah. Well, we will take you up uh, on your offer, Dr. Sharma. Uh, after this. Yeah. Uh, good morning, myself, D.C. Bhatt from Kendri Vidyalaya Vigyan Vihar, Delhi. Delhi. No, yes, sir. Which subject do you teach? I am uh, teaching physics, physics. Uh, since 1990. Wow. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Myself, Rajinder Kumar Khajuria from State Institute of Education, Jammu. My subject is chemistry, and also dealing with the ICT teaching. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, State uh, Institute, which place? State Institute of Education, Jammu. Jammu, Jammu and Kashmir. Oh, Jammu. Yeah. Ah, oh, welcome from a long place. Thank you. So you are located in Jammu, sir. Yeah. Good morning to all. Myself, M P Singh, P G T Chemistry from J N V B E. हेलो सर माई सेल्फ गोपाल चोपड़े फ्रॉम कोल्हापुर पी जी टी बायोलॉजी बायोलॉजी गुड मॉर्निंग सर प्रमोद कुमार साहू पी जी टी मैथमेटिक्स फ्रॉम गोंदिया फ्रॉम गोंदिया गोंदिया आई सेड आ बिकॉज आई ऑल्सो स्टडी इन रायपुर फॉर अयर सो वेरी नियर नमस्ते माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर अमित माली एंड आई एम फ्रॉम एल एन के कॉलेज ऑफ एजुकेशन इट्स अ सी टी पाटन एंड आई एम अ assistant professor of science and technology pedagogy and i translated uh, moodle in gujarati way back oh <laughs> and i am happy moodle. to be here with you all people and uh, currently i am a state core team member for the development of noer i see and which place you are located in patan gujarat patan okay good good morning sir hmm? Myself Burudi A D from Navodaya Vidyalaya. He did his Nashi. primary school in Patan. He remembers. <laughs> Small, good memory. Yeah. Uh, good morning, sir. Myself Burudi A D from Navodaya Vidyalaya, Nashik. Ah. I am teaching there physics. Physics. Yes. Okay. Hello. Good morning, sir. Myself M S Goel, P G T Mathematics, X J N V Vadodara, Gujarat. Sabhi ko pranam. I am Ramesh Badoni, Dehradun, Uttarakhand. I am a physics teacher. Thank you. A very good morning to all of you. Uh, myself Sanjay Dukar, headmaster, Government High School, uh, Nadora, Bardesh, Goa. I am a mathematics teacher. Uh, which place in Goa is it? Nadora. 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 That is after uh, Mapsa. I see. But after Mapsa, there is only a river. Af after Mapsa. <laughs> uh, half, of half, of <laughs> half of Goa is after Mapsa. Okay. <laughs> Very good morning to all of you. I Jamshedur Rahman, uh, working as a junior associate mathematics at Central Institute of Education and Technology, NCERT, New Delhi. Okay. Very good morning. Myself uh, Yogesh Punia. I'm research scholar at University of Delhi. University of Delhi. Delhi. Yes. Sir. Oh, you are a research scholar. Uh, a sort of so because I'm in the final year of my MSc. So I will be moving forward for a PhD. Namaskar myself Dr Yashpal Sharma assistant professor in Central Institute of Education Technology NCERT in Biological Sciences 
Good morning, sir. I am Poonam Gupta, PGT Chemistry, Faculty in Zonal Institute of Education Training, Mumbai. Ah, you are also uh, from Mumbai. Yeah, then. I joined Sangatan in 1994 oh. as PGT Chemistry. Good morning, everyone. I am Preeti Kiran, PGT Chemistry, KVAGCR, Delhi. And I have joined KVS in 1994. And I have recorded video lectures with CIET and CRT in chemistry for class 11th and 12th. Very good. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I am myself Dhanraj SB. I am coming from Regional Institute of Education, Mysore. I am presently a student uh, studying there. Which institute you said? Regional, inst Regional Institute of Education. Regional Institute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good morning to one and all. I am A. Rohit from Regional Institute of Education, Mysore. So both of them are prospective uh, teachers. Okay. Good morning, sir and all. Uh, myself, Khonish Guho. I am from Jalpaiguri, West Bengal. Uh, I am a PGT in physics. So you have probably come from the farthest place in this uh, I hope so. Because and the uh, first Jambu one to reach, Jambu check in. Much nearer to, uh, first one to reach. Yes. Okay. And uh, I am a pa member of the NRO at TM oh, uh, in the West Bengal. And I am doing translation job uh, for Bengali. For Bengali. You know, I got confused because you are sitting plumly with my team. And I was wondering, <laughs> when, when, when did we engage with you for the such work? But Sorry for the this. people uh, sitting around you actually do this translation. And oh was there God. any attempt in Bengali translation, Kiran? No. It's Hindi and uh, Gujarati. No, no. Right. Right. So in NRO, you are, uh, sir, is there, uh, yeah. we are doing in uh, the scheduled language. So Bengali is in the schedule. So as per that. Yeah, oh, there are yeah. 20, 29 correct, correct. We mentioned that. Except that as an added attraction, something which I did not know which you mentioned that there are n number of dialects in every state and Odisha itself has some four tribal dialects in which it has to publish textbooks locally and so on, whatever. So, Sir, uh, my intention sitting over is clicking some photos. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you're most welcome. Thank you. Uh, I forgot one very important component of our team and that is the team which has been helping us uh, create courses for the global MOOCs as well as for this. And we are currently using their expertise to run all our labs in such training workshops. Uh, there is a large team, but out of that team, uh, three people who are participating is uh, Vrinda, Ujwala. Where is Ujwala? Ah, Ujwala has come. Uh, she comes from all the way from Girga or some place. So thank you for coming in time. And uh, Murkute, uh, who is actually a PMO's uh, part, but he is participating in this. I would also like to mention few things. I am glad that there are people who are working on pedagogy. Uh, all of you are familiar with how uh, pedagogical studies have revealed that the conventional teaching is not very effective. In fact, in IIT Bombay itself, we have a group working on educational technology for last uh, about eight years, so seven to eight years. And some of them have actually conducted experiments in pedagogy using technology a flipped classroom that we talk of where students listen to the lectures online and uh, come to solve problems and discussions in the class has been consistently run for last five years by Professor uh, Kannan Maudgalya in his classroom. Uh, we used Akash tablets to conduct online quizzes every day in the classroom. We still do that. Uh, Professor Sridhar Ayer and Dr. Sahana Murthy have done some very good work, the measured uh, manner in a controlled measured manner for finding out the effectiveness of the flat classroom in terms of engaging students and the moral of the story is that however good your teaching may be however best quality your content may be the learning finally depends upon the quality time and attention spent by the student so if in spite of the it does not mean that the best quality time spent by the student will result in learning if the teaching is bad but both are equally important and that is the emphasis that we are trying. We also realize that uh, no matter what we do with technology, uh, with the given psychology of the learners, it is impossible to remove the conventional familiar model of a group of students and a teacher interacting for the most effective learning because that is the way the students perceive things. We ourselves believe that at least in the near future or next five to ten years, uh, MOOCs will be used 
as a great complement to the conventional education and therefore it is important to get on board all the teachers who are actually teaching in the conventional fashion and modify their thinking as well. The second thing I would like to mention is that we are actually trying to bridge a gap between the conventional education uh, using conventional means that has been imparted so far and preparing students for the conventional science, maths and other uh, things. But we are preparing them for the digital era which is dawning on humanity at much faster rate. So if you will notice in 1990 there was only internet. The World Wide Web started and you see the revolution it has made. Okay. Secondly, you will see a large amount of content in various ways causing an information overdose to students. Thirdly, you will see that young students are getting adapt at using internet much faster than all of us. Now, given these circumstances and given the fact that almost all activities are increasingly becoming digital, perhaps it is time to re-examine whether our conventional education is adequate to handle that requirement. Towards this end, the digitization of information and creation of content is only one aspect. But particularly for science, as you know, heart of science is experiments. And most of our experiments are conventional experiments. So my friend uh, Professor Prakash Vaidya is not here. But I am requesting a half an hour slot yeah, to be uh, uh, for, uh, for him. He is, is gone to Pune. But we are discussing this and he explained to me how we used to, he reminded me of how we used to do the experiment on a balance. If you recall, you have a balance with a knife edge and it is actually resting down and then you lift it up with some thing to be measured, whose weight is measured. Then with those small uh, forceps, you will actually put those uh, weights there. And how long does it take to balance it? Quite some time. Now that's the only way. That's the only way we explain the balancing and weight measurement. But is that the way that is going to be there in the digital era? Certainly not. Okay. What will actually happen in future when internet of things take place, not just internet of information, is that you would have digital monitoring and control of gadgets hundreds of miles away. We did that showcase experiment by using an Akash tablet in New York, controlling a robo in IIT Bombay lab and the robo camera captured video stream was being seen by people in New York. That might appear to be an esoteric experiment today, but that would become the way of life. So the argument went like this, that when the humanity was evolving training programs in the early days, he said, recall the days when fire would have been discovered. Now, as all of you know, in India, the training on use of fire has been very extensive in all our literature. In fact, fire could not be extinguished at a home because it could not be relit again easily. So there were methods of how chula jalane ke baad, how you will keep something around there. And there were protocols defined and those were taught. Do we teach them today? No. We don't even teach them how to use a matchbox. It is considered common knowledge. Similarly, more and more digital things will happen there. But are we changing our experiments? Are we at least initiating students into using digital technology in everything that they do? Towards this end, I have requested Professor Prakash Vaidya to give a half an hour session. He has actually purchased ordinary gadgets like a digital weight balance, stopwatch and such thing. And he has worked closely with the school teachers in Mumbai and has worked out some experiments for demonstration. So he might do that on. Similarly, there has been a movement in, uh, in IIT under the aegis of our projects uh, run by a colleague of ours, uh, Professor Ravina Shaute, who is like uh, Professor Pradeep Verma and Prakash Vaidya is a consultant to the project. Uh, he was, uh, he's a very uh, senior software person from TCS worked for decades there and after taking voluntary retirement he was he wanted to do social service so i convinced him to do social service by joining iit bomb as part of our eklavi project he runs an ek shiksha portal the concept is that no matter where the student comes from city background rural background every student deserves to get the same best quality education independent of language 
So uh, there will be a half an hour. Originally, he was to speak in the morning, but I think he will be speaking with you in the afternoon today at 4.30. Other than that, our main emphasis is, of course, to introduce you to the Swayam platform. Uh, for those of you who do not know, the MOOCs are currently run in globally by several organizations, the three most prominent ones with maximum number of global learners engaged with them are Udacity, Coursera and EDX. Out of these three, EDX is a not-for-profit organization set up by two universities jointly. The regents of Harvard and MIT gave $30 million each to set up this not-for-profit company. And they are spearheading a, groups of, a group of universities across the world to give courses globally. Additionally, they had announced that they will open source their entire software platform. That software platform is almost uh, 2 million lines of code, out of which 250,000 lines of code has been developed afresh by the EDX team. Uh, in fact, we joined in the consortium hoping that they will open source it and we can use it for India and that is what has happened. So the adoption of the open EDX for Indian needs is now called Swayam. The Swayam system is going to be launched any time now. 22 courses from universities are already getting designed. And uh, we suggested to ministry that along with the conventional higher education courses, there should at least be some courses in vocational training and some courses in school education. This was accepted, thankfully. And uh, therefore, we have some courses in vocational training, such as educational animations, uh, such as maintenance of electric motors, etc., etc. And they have agreed that two subjects in ninth standard, science and maths, would be included at the launch time. Now, very clearly, the launch, which is likely to happen in November 10th or 11th, 11th is the, uh, an important day. How many of you know 11th November as Education Day in memory of uh, the first education minister of the country? So it might get launched there. And it is impossible to start a course and prepare it within the next 10 days. But my suggestion, which was accepted by the ministry, is that when the site is launched, all the courses which are on offer will be listed there. But along with that list, there will be start date and duration for each course. That start date could be December, could be January, could be February. Now, what should be the start date has to be decided by the team of teachers who will be building that course. And to decide that, they will have to estimate how long it will take for them to create that entire course. This three-day workshop is to permit you as a group and also as individuals to come to such conclusion that if similar facilities exist, then how long will it take for you to complete the design of a course and make it ready to offer? Okay, so that is the limited objective of this one. Now, as I said, the EDX platform uh, has two major components. One is the course management system and the other is the learning management system. The course management system is where courses are created. I must uh, mention that there is always some confusion in the terminology that the Americans use and we use in India. For us in higher education, a course is actually what they call a program. BSc, BA, BE is a course. And the subjects that we teach, physics, chemistry, mathematics, engineering, whatever, are called subjects. Americans call the subjects as courses and the degrees as programs. So massive open online courses is actually massive open online subjects, but subjects as are taught. So the term course is to be interpreted as a subject which is being taught online, where, and that is the major difference between a MOOC and a, any other digital content which is created. You know, for example, NPTEL has created Thousands of hours of uh, recorded lectures in engineering subjects. Similarly, any ORE has a lot of uh, digital assets. Many of you are participating in that. The main difference between all those assets, individually and collectively, and a course, is a course is as if I am a student and you are teaching me. Except thousands like me are accessing that course online. But accessing that course means they are actually doing that course. So if there is an eight-week course, for example, then each of the weeks has a specific activity, exactly like as if you are giving me lectures during that week, as if you are giving some demonstration, as if you are giving me some practice problem. 
as if you are doing an assessment every week something which you cannot do ordinarily on paper based thing because you will have to spend a lot of time in evaluating but objective questions can be evaluated automatically on this platform and it is possible to conduct one quiz formally every week use that assessment as part of the evaluation in fact with akash tablet uh, professor uh, kanan maugalya conducts as many as 3 to 4 quizzes in every lecture all of them are counted towards assessment now that is continuous evaluation really. and in the flip classroom active learning is encouraged so these are some of the advantages i would like to conclude this part by saying that a mooc is fundamentally different than any digital asset that we could create to help student with better quality knowledge so quality knowledge content is one thing but a course is a complete prescriptive method by which we actually teach the student and therefore when you design the course your emphasis is not only on creating the best video recorded lectures best examples best quiz problems etc but also to sequence these things proper okay now creation of this course is done by the course management part the content management part of uh, the uh, swayam platform the other part is the learning management system where students actually enroll students go through all the exercises they they see the lectures they answer quizzes etc etc with one very very major difference conventionally also if i teach 50 students they would be doing exactly similar activities they'll be attending the lectures going home they will be studying something they'll be solving some problems but there is no way i can monitor how much time each student has spent on any activity however the swayam platform captures every keystroke by every student as an event so if a student is let us say listening to a video the moment that student clicks on that video that event is captured the moment student says pause that event is captured the moment student goes to see a one page full of explanation when he clicks on that page event is captured when he clicks out of that page an event is captured of course it is possible that i can click on a page and start seeing t- television instead of that but such cases will be rare in general and these events create huge amount of data analyzing such data as teachers you realize will be a gold mine for you to tell you how students behave while doing a course in detail and you can use that factor to understand the students approach to a course and modify either the course content or methodology etc etc in fact some of our researchers here at mtech and phd level are working on modified form of intelligent tutoring system you would have heard of intelligent tutoring systems where you actually estimate the knowledge of a student based on the evaluation that you have done earlier and say that this student should read this additional material or this student should do these additional quizzes etc now in addition to basing such judgment on the knowledge of the student whom what you find out from the assessment you can actually also intelligently find out how the student has been using the material through the event log so the student's behavior can also be factored in giving that student a better advice of learning now these are the things which the platform provides we have if you have seen the time table we have a lot of lab sessions there one mistake we made is that we did not advise you to actually register on the edx global site and look at the edx demo course the edx demo course which has been uh, designed to give the uh, initiation to anybody in fact that course is meant for students teachers everybody you can see the capabilities of what can be included in a course offering on moocs using that demo course it's a short course now what we have done is brinda uh, correct me if i am wrong we have actually made uh, copies of that course right so we have made i think six copies of that course in addition to the original one okay the original edx course on swam platform is what you would see first in the lab session that you go you will actually see that entire thing something which could have been done earlier but that's okay we'll uh, lose some time then there is a documentation that has been prepared 
on Swayam Studio. As I said, Swayam Studio is the component which helps you build all the components that you will see in the EDX demo course. Ideally, you would be building in groups a particular subject or a particular course. Technically, we have only two subjects, science and maths. But I believe that science has uh, three components, uh, physics, chemistry and biology. We did not know whether mathematics also has such components. Uh, we understand that science also has environment as one part. Is it a separate part or is it? It's not a separate part. Anyway, what we have done is we have tentatively created six courses. The idea is that we divide ourselves into six teams. And each team takes charge of one particular topic or subject or whatever. And you build a course. Now you will not build a course from scratch. Because if there is blank canvas, you don't even know how to create this, how to do that. The Swayam platform, I mean the original EDX platform provides the following. If there is a course that somebody has designed in that platform somewhere else, I can export that course from that instance of that server, import it here on my server and modify it and edit it. You will agree that this is the best way of updating it. So what our teams have done is they have taken the EDX demo course, imported it from the EDX demo, exported it from EDX demo and imported it in six avatars. The seventh avatar is the raw EDX demo course. For that course, all of you have been registered or will be registered as students. So in the first hour or so, you will actually go through that course and see for yourself what kind of facilities it offers. I understand a few of you are already familiar with that EDX platform. Right? So maybe you can also join my team to help others in understand. But once you are familiar, then you will, you might as well start, we'll, we have said formally that we will make the groups in the evening, but these groups will actually work on individual subjects. For that, what you will do is, you will take EDX demo A, EDX demo B, EDX demo C, I don't know what are the exact names, A, B, C, D, E, F, these six names have been given. Each team will take one name, A, B, C or D or E or F. And then each team will decide, all right, my team will do uh, physics, my team will do chemistry, my team will do biology, my team will do coordinate geometry, my team will do algebra or if there is an overlap, I would request all of you to discuss this during the lunch break as to how would you like to divide. If you need more courses, I am sure Brinda and Nurmila will be able to create a new course although it takes some time. If you require less, for example, you require three components for science and only one for maths or two for maths, we can use only five of them. So we'll define these teams there. The components of studio are best seen by actually dabbling by hand. I can give you a, a lecture uh, and that is what I think Professor Gayatunde expected me to do. You will notice that I have not spent any time in, in giving that talk. Uh, there are a few things which are best taught by experiment. So for example, I can, I can give a one hour lecture to my son on how to ride a bicycle. But much better would be to run with him when he is riding the bicycle. Let him fall a couple of times. That, that way he will learn faster and better. Okay. So there are a few things which, for which there is no replacement for hands-on activities. And therefore I would suggest that in the lab today morning, you spend first at least half an hour, 45 minutes in familiarizing with the courses and the content and what are the components and so on. And then uh, you will start experimenting with building uh, the course itself. So uh, please go through the Swayam Studio documentation guide. It is largely based on the EDX Studio guide because they, there is no functionality change that we have made. There is another hidden agenda that I have in this workshop. The studio has been primarily designed to offer courses in a manner in which most American universities offer courses. That is where all it started. It is not necessary that that is the only way in which the courses could be built. Even in United States, but certainly not in India. Particularly when it comes to school level courses or vocational courses, there could be 
serious new requirements of functionality which may not exist here now you are all experienced teachers in the sense you know exactly how the subject is currently taught you also understand that there will be some changes in the way that teaching will happen jointly but within this ambit if you feel that some functionality of the studio is inadequate or some new functionality should be provided please ensure that you write it down discuss it among yourselves and i would be very happy if at the end of the 3 days the concluding session if you can jointly give a single document as a feedback to us saying that we as school teachers believe that for school education the following additional functionalities could be very useful i think that would be a great contribution made by you to it we have proposed two projects to the national mission one project which has been approved but some financial due diligence is being done is on the platform development this platform development project is a three year project in which we are going to start with the open edx and we have already started this platform will be studied for architecture scalability and modified functional requirements for indian needs and every year a new version will be released containing additional functionality that is required with the requirement emerges simultaneously we will maintain a compatibility with the growing open edx community in the world because the next version that comes out from edx open community should be usable by us so whatever we do will be done in coordination with them since it was primarily meant for higher education we wanted a self sustaining model for these books in india so we have suggested that like edx a not for profit company be set up we should run these courses we should get these courses designed by teachers we should operationalize these courses now you need a revenue model i mean there is no replacement for money and government grant cannot perpetually run thing so there has to be a good business model which is affordable this section 8 company will set up a revenue model the model that we have suggested and, and setting up such a section 8 company is also part of our project so this company will be set up the model that we have proposed is that first of all all content that we create will be free as per the policy of the government any publicly funded knowledge creation should be released under creative commons cc by sa license and i am very happy that the same recommendation has been made for all the digital assets uh, of of the school level books i do not know whether any further uh, development has happened there or we have uh, we have already initiated that project so okay. by december the 9th 9th to 12 ha huh. english and hindi okay available on the web good so the content should be free as far as books are concerned there are three categories of students that we envisage students who simply want to audit the course they just want to listen to it participate in it see the discussion forum questions and answers but they don't want to interact they just want to audit that course such students will always get access free there will be no charge ever there are some students who would like to interact on discussion forums or on additional forums that we might create such as actual video interaction live video interaction etc in india for interaction there will be some cost we have recommended a cost of anywhere between rupees 150 to 500 per course for such interaction they will be eligible to receive an honor code certificate that means they will give their own exams online they will certify that they have not cheated and on that basis some certificate will be automatically generated okay the third category is students who would wish to give supervised online examinations who might participate in some blended mode experiments but who wish that the marks scored by them in the mooc scores should be considered as marks scored in their regular exam so universities will accept the credit for such courses schools will accept the marks obtained by such students provided all examinations are supervised that is the third model and that model will cost a learner a fees just like a student pays a fees to the school we have suggested for higher education a fees ranging between 750 rupees to 1500 rupees per course now that is for higher education how it will be mapped in school how the government will facilitate 
payment for such students who cannot even afford these fees, etc., etc., are other matters. There are policy issues which are under discussion with the government and the various regulatory bodies on, on actually acknowledging and recognizing these marks and credits. So that is the way the future is going. Uh, coming back to the Swayam platform, as I said, please use your time for getting familiar with the Swayam studio because that is where you will be creating the course. Please remember that any course that you create and once you make it public, any content that you make it public is visible automatically on the learning management system. So any and you can also pose as student. So you can see what a student will see once you have designed the course. Please remember that the original EDX will have videos and content and quizzes, etc., etc., which are just samples. You will have to create their equivalent in your own topic that you choose. We may or may not have time to capture your video lectures, but I would request. Uh, last time I think we had organized such and this that each team could create one video recording or something. So uh, you will be visiting uh, the studio tomorrow. Uh, is it possible that uh, uh, tomorrow evening uh, we can stay a bit longer and uh, record some sample sessions from each team, say a 10 minute session or something like it. Because if you can do that tomorrow, then day after tomorrow you can integrate it in the courses that you have done. It's a sample what you can say pilot training program. So no earth shaking things are expected. But I'll tell you my experience has been that when teams get into the groove, they actually try to do the best. And while doing it, as I said, keep track of what you as a teacher feel should be available for creating such a course. Any new functionality, any additional functionality requirement. Good morning to all of you. While um, the uh, the larger context of all of us engaging with the edX platform, edX platform simply being one convenient platform available to us, but considering more that we are looking at the entire school education. Here is this first batch of people who are looking at secondary school, ninth standard, tenth standard, maths and science. But we are looking at class one to class twelve, all subjects, all topics as that larger canvas on which we are working, and that is where the uh, the the structure that Professor Patak uh, described just now uh, would be slightly differing. So the way we look at any such pedagogical activity is that every teacher is articulating his or her personal view of how that lesson should be taught or how that particular course should be articulated. And we use this as a model for everybody else to sort of also reflect upon. And that is where the import of a course from somewhere else and you know modifying it also stands. So we are looking at this as a teacher development activity that every teacher in this country given an opportunity to articulate a publicly a way in which I would like to teach this particular course in itself is a training program for that teacher to articulate how uh, courses should be. So which, which essentially has two components. One is engaging with the content. Unlike higher education where perhaps you would naturally refer to 10, 15 different references before you construct a course, in our case, we have, we, or we naturally start with a prescribed textbook. In a way, this is limiting. In a way, this is also convenient that there is somebody who has already packaged everything. But it doesn't give us all that flexibility that we need to think out of the box, think of different ways in which that lesson should flow. So naturally, most of us experienced teachers have regressed to saying that I'm teaching chapter four of the textbook rather than saying I'm teaching cell technology or whatever. <laughs> so first shackle that I believe teachers ought to break away from is this particular shackle. And we believe that this is a good way of initiating them into how uh, courses are developed, how one can think through. 14, let us say 14 periods have been allotted to a particular chapter in the textbook. Now what does that 14 periods mean? Is it is it that the first section should be done on the first day or is it necessary that we break away from that and think of 14 lessons together and so on. So I see this as an opportunity. The second thing that we are also looking at is that each of these courses actually functions as a refresher course for all those teachers who have been deprived from primary access to resources. Because there are thousands of teachers who would never perhaps look at another book simply because they don't exist. They may not exist physically, they may not exist in the language in which that person can handle it or it might simply be uh, not relevant to the particular course that we are uh, handling. So 
Access to resources is also one of the primary reasons why we would like to engage with this program. So each of these model courses is a refresher course for every teacher to articulate what should be the content of it and what should be the possible methodologies. So this, every course that you're developing also, and that's our wish list, that every course here actually resides as an object inside the national repository. And the teacher doesn't have to go to a university called Swayam to engage with that course, but that becomes available as a personal instance within the uh, personal page of uh, every teacher. So the national repository is developing a social networking model where every teacher would be allowed their own personal page. And in that personal page, they have their own library, they have their own class, they have their own courses that they are attending, their own special interest groups that they are participating in. All those activities happen within that page. So that, uh, you know, the uh, one of the development wish list in that would be that that Swayam allows uh, instance of this course being run within a small box within their page. Now, how that unrolls, I don't know, but then we'll have to worry about it. Uh, what you just mentioned is actually running today in IIT. In fact, in the last eight months, a team led by Avna Shaute has actually created what we call a blended MOOC version. So, for example, today CS 101 in IIT Bombay is being taught in a blended MOOC in the following way. Technically, I have created the main MOOC course, which is on one server. There is another server, which is IIT Bombay server, where that course content is available with full facility for the local teacher to add any content, okay, and to select any sequencing, which is offered to those students. Practically, both me and my colleague, Professor Supratik, are doing both the tasks. But this platform was so designed that there could be one version in IIT Bombay, another copy in VJTI, third copy in COEP, a copy, in fact, in each engineering college. But is that a whole copy of the platform? Whole copy of that course, but with facility. So each course has an avatar, which is individual institution specific, where the local teacher can actually do all the innovations that one wishes. So that is one of the requirements. It is not currently a functional uh, feature of open EDA. But we have actually created that. We are experimenting with replication and so on. There are many technical issues. For example, if 5,000 colleges adopt this course, now out of those 5,000 colleges, you will agree that at least 10%, 50 colleges and their teachers will make significant contributions which, are, which will enhance the value of the basic course itself. There has to be a mechanism to get those, uh, first select those 50 and get them here. And then the modified program should be replicated at all 5,000 places. It's not easy problems to solve. At school level, the problem is compounded because individual schools may not have the infrastructure, but a larger infrastructure at the national level can be. I will also like to add one thing. Navodaya Vidyalaya are a great phenomena which many in the country are not even aware of which is very sad. I was myself not aware of till five years ago when my friend Monish Paberai through his uh, Dakshana Foundation started training students for IIT JE. And uh, in fact, one of the toppers of the first batch uh, is a computer science student, comes from an extremely humble family, studied in uh, Navodaya Vidyalaya because Navodaya Vidyalaya offers the complete education without much cost to the parents. And he studied here. He is a, uh, some 8.9 CPI in computer science final year, an extraordinary student. So I think while we reach with these efforts everywhere, we would like to reach to the smart people in every area and every nook and corner of the country. And I think uh, what Dr. Rajaram said is, is correct in a much broader sense. What will happen in five years, ten years later, we can see that a huge uh, expansion will happen. But you people who are participating in this workshop are actually creators of a history. This, nobody can rob you of this particular thing. You are creating history in school education, just as those 24 teachers are creating history in higher education. So with that, I would request you to break for tea and go on. Thank you so much. <laughs>